But one of the things that I just have a foundational principle. We became the greatest country on the planet in the history of our planet Earth in a, just a couple hundred short years, and it was based on personal responsibility, limited government, and hard work ethic. So if we can restore those three things and get rid of all this other junk, we will then continue to be a leader and a beacon for the world. Brent, welcome to Timelines Interview. Thank you. It's hey, great to be here. Great to have you down. They just flew in from Las Vegas. Tonight, you're a, you are a candidate for lieutenant governor. And what are you down here for? We're up here for uh, the women's club. Oh, up here. Yeah, yeah, up here. <laughs> We're up here for the women's club uh, forum Las Vegas. And, and meet and greet today. From Las Vegas, right? Yes, yes, yes. You know, it's funny. Um, if the candidates are here, I thought you came up here for this interview. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, hey, you know, it's good to be here with you, Bill. No, course. it's good. And we thank you. The debate's just up. You did a great job in the uh, Republican Men's Club debate. Thank you. It's had like almost 1,000 views so far. That's awesome. It's really good. Somebody did, wasn't there. Who was? No, I don't want to oh, yeah, talk yeah. about the Michael guy. Michael Roberson, of course, he doesn't want to be when we talk about issues. Yeah, I'll tell you what. A lot of people were really upset that he didn't show up. I, I Whatever. It's hard to get elected if you don't show up. Well, you know, if you got a lot of money and you got a lot of uh, people backing you for whatever reasons, and you don't want to talk about the issues, you got to stay behind and just use, you know, what? Well, anyways. Anyway, so talk we're, we're going to talk about we're going to talk a little bit about you, your background, where you grew up, how you got to Nevada and Las Vegas, and then uh, your basic uh, take a break, and we'll go to uh, your, your values. And finally, talk a little bit about your campaign. Excellent. St starting out, where'd you grow up? What school did you go to? I grew up in a, a small town called Ojai, California, which is by Ventura, Santa Barbara. It's north of Los Angeles. And then, um, interesting, uh, real quick, I actually had a pilot slot in the Air Force and did my basic training. And then I got a very rare disease called Guillain-Barre, and I was completely paralyzed and on a respirator, and I couldn't even focus my eyes. So it was me. very life-changing early on in my life. So I lost my career choice, which was to be, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. That was my dream. And um, then I went to business school, and I, I went to law school and graduated from Pepperdine. But really, it really ingrained in me that you can't give up when I had that Guillain-Barre. I mean, it's so easy to give up, but you just can't. And it made me, I believe, a much stronger, resilient person. I did law, but I didn't really like law because I didn't like being with the entitled elites that want to just take money. So I started a business, working in business. And then as my business started growing, I realized that California actually persecutes business. So I moved to Nevada about 15 years ago, and my business has grown well. I have a number of my own, own real water, which is a nationally um, sold premium water. Uh, that's not real water, but uh, it's in a blue bottle. It's doing quite well. I also own Real MMA, which is a mixed martial arts, because Las Vegas is fight central for mm -hmm. mixed martial arts. And we just had our last event a couple weeks ago. It was really good, sold out. And then third, I started the Real Chamber. And I started the Real Chamber because in the 2015 legislative session, our uh, the, the Metro Chamber, which is the largest chamber in Nevada, came out with a study saying that the uh, top line gross receipts, commerce tax would be bad for business. Two days later, they rescinded that, and then they were telling everybody that this tax is good for business. That's bull. The tax is not good for business. I obviously fought against the tax very hard, and then I voted against it, but unfortunately, uh, the turncoat, so to speak, uh, allowed it to go through. Let me step back real fast. I got a cu couple questions to ask you. Just, sure. Um, first of all, MMA. Yes. What, what do you do in the MMA? Well. Because real water is really, it's a good water, healthy, a lot of the elite mixed martial artists from Frank Mir, Gray Maynard, uh, Stephen Bonner, you name it, Hall of Famers, were drinking this real water. So we started using that as an advertising medium. And then after a while, I just said, you know what? I just want to start my own promotion. So I went through, it took me about a year and a half through the Athletic Commission. I got my own promoter's license. So now about every two months, we have a real MMA event. Our last one was at Samstown Live in Las Vegas and we're actually outgrowing it because we sold it out twice so we're gonna continue to just grow it up. Wow that's huge. How do you learn to be a promoter? Uh, I'm just a businessman and I just dig in and like Winston Churchill said never 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 give up. I know you've done so many things I, I'm not saying you're um, a jack of all trades but you seem to be successful and you do a lot of stuff you try stuff. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Now you've been elected also you've been elected to uh, state senate. Right? State, state senate? assembly Assembl yes assembly. I was a state assembly. assemblyman and unfortunately we were in that dreadful 2015 session where we did the commerce tax. The good thing that came out of that was the ESAs however again um, the, our Supreme Court said the ESAs, which educational savings accounts, were legal, but 
they needed a specific funding. So when we were in special session, us conservatives were, pr were asking, let's fund these ESAs, let's fund these ESAs, we have the votes. But again, Michael Roberson, my opponent, stopped the ESAs from being funded. So that's just since this last cycle, right? The last yeah. two years? Y well, yeah, the in last California, one they did. Yeah. What I love about Nevada is your traditional uh, assembly members, your part-time, which I yes. love, you're yes. real people. California, they went the other direction. They full -time. became full-time and they did nothing to do but make more rules and laws. Well, you know, it's funny because normally, I'll just say, the Democrats, their whole job is to take from people that produce. That's all they do. They want to take from people that produce. Republicans or, or entrepreneurs, we are on this hamster wheel. And if we keep on running faster because they keep piling on more regulation, at some point we got to step off. And only if we had a part-time legislature can people like myself, who's a full-time business person, can we do the legislature? If it was a full-time job, like people ask, why don't you run for Congress? Because I don't want to be a full-time politician. I only want to be part-time because I'm a businessman at heart. So Lieutenant, we'll get to Lieutenant Governor when we get to there. Okay. So I want to finish up a couple things because I could go on to other stuff. I want to step back one step further. The disease you had yes. uh, in, in the Air Force. So were you, did you get commission? No. So I was an officer cadet. Okay. And then, so when I got discharged, I was discharged as an airman's first class because I wasn't the full officer So you officer were a, a ROTC scholarship Exa then. Exactly. So I was in my end of my junior year. So I did wow, basic wow. in between your sophomore yep. and junior year. You do basic, which was out in Vandenberg in California. It was actually an awesome experience. Got to do a lot of stuff, play with a lot of big toys. And, uh, but then, yes, I wanted to be a, a pilot, you know. Yeah, I know. I, I did, that. too. I finally made it to helicopters. I didn't quite make yeah. it to jets in the Marine Corps, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. another story. I actually applied for the Naval Academy, so we've got a Naval Academy grad over here. <laughs> <laughs> ended up at West Point, so. Yeah, you hey, can't complain Go about Army, that too much. Navy. Well, that's really good. So that's your background, how you got going in, in Las Vegas. When did you move to Las Vegas? Uh, about 15 years ago, oh, wow. early 2000s. So that's your home. You know it inside yeah, yeah, out. Yeah. What made you go to Las Vegas? Because business is persecuted in California, and it's even getting worse. So I, I saw the writing on the wall, so that's why I moved to Nevada, because it's a pro-business state. So that's my frustration. If we're going to ruin Nevada, California has already been ruined with progressive policies. Let's not ruin Nevada. Why, why do Californians come here and want to ruin Nevada? It just doesn't make sense. You know, overall, I think they do a pretty good job in the state keeping the cost down on, on everybody business. But they did pass a, a new tax, which I despise. It was more than just the top line commerce tax. It also, they increased the, the fees for corporations. They increased the modified business right. tax. They increased a whole basket of taxes. They, they drove the resident agency business out of uh, Nevada. It used to be very popular. You'd have a foreign corporation here. You paid a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. You'd come once a, a year, have your meeting, enjoy the sites, whether it be Reno or, or Las Vegas. It was basically free money injected into our system. Right. Now they charge 500 bucks and all these guys are going to other countries, yeah, other but, states. But I'll tell you what, there's still a lot of benefits. The small business is still well protected here. I know that for a fact. If you can Better than California, it, but I've, it's getting worse. Oh my gosh. We, that's I, what I'm I've saying. I've had it's two getting lawsuits worse. in California over ADA. I don't want to go into detail. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Yes, yes. Both frivolous, but you, you pay the nominal amount. They reward people to attack productive people there. Yeah, it's very frustrating. So anyway, we're going to go to a quick break, come back with your uh, purposes, family values and purposes, things of that nature, and then go on a little to your campaign and finish up. Because you got to get to a forum over here. Yeah, it's, they're packing in. <laughs> so, this is Bill, and I want to thank the Silver Sponsors for their financial support for the videos as well as our podcasts. The first person to support us uh, as Silver Sponsor was Ed and Georgette Strom, then Ray and Carolyn Rocha. Other sponsors are U.S. Nuclear Energy Foundation and Gary Duarte. My wife, Karen, is a real estate broker here in Reno, Nevada. Tom Heck for U.S. Senate. Sharon Angle for U.S. Congress. Eugene Hoover for Lieutenant Governor. Brett Jones for Lieutenant Governor. Craig Muller for Attorney General. Wes Duncan for Attorney General. Derek Urar for State Treasurer. Gary Smith. Candidate 16, Senate District. Kim Meyer for Sheriff here in Washoe County. Sherman Box for Sheriff again in Washoe County. Andrew Caldwell for Washoe County School Board Trustee. Aji Shiraji for Mayor of Reno. Eddie Lorton for Mayor of Reno. Washoe County Commissioner Jeannie Herman. Dan Schwartz for Governor. Re-elect Mike Clark, Washoe County Assessor. And finally, without their support, we couldn't do things like this. We have literally had this month 20,000 views, and that's because of our marketing and support of the uh, Silver Sponsors. And as you can see, um, overall, we've had 124,000 views for the life of it, 736,000 
impressions. Impressions is what you see on the side. You'll find these on uh, websites as well as YouTube and Google. Now, without further ado, let's get All right, right Brett, into welcome the second back half break. of this interview. We just thank the Silver Sponsors, which you are one. Yeah, sure. So thanks. That's uh, made no possible. So, uh, Going on, we're going to talk about your, your values, your core values, or either going to use business, value, business or leadership, or anything you want to talk about towards how you run your life. But you, you brought down purpose, family, and integrity. So yes. what, is, what does purpose mean to you? Well, first of all, you have to have an op overall purpose in your life that is your driving force that keeps you motivated. And my purpose really is to, is to improve our society. I really have a passion to improve our society. That's why, like when I was a lawyer, I didn't like it. So I believe my product, when people buy my product, they actually elevate their lifestyle. And so I, everything I do, I want to elevate people's lifestyle. Like my real MA, people go there to enjoy. They escape, and they, it's, it's fun. Um, so I like to do things that actually improve people's lives, and that's my overall purpose, and that's what drives me. Very good. So purpose and driving in MMA, you um, have traveled different courses in your life. You've done more than one thing. Yes, yes, yes. And what is, so what is purpose of life? Now, how does that relate? Your second value is family. Family, so right. Purpose, family, how does that relate? So I have an o overall guiding purpose to, you know, improve society and, and help people do better. Next is the family. Of course, your family unit is your closest to you. And I have a duty, obligation, responsibility to raise my kids properly, to love them and nurture them so they'll also become good citizens. Um, you know, I love my kids so much and I and, and involve them in everything. In fact, I was just at a, uh, uh, another little debate with veterans in politics and my little son came running up during the thing and, and I always want to have my kids around me all the time. It was, it was precious. You know, it kind of interrupted, but I just love my family and I, want, and I have a responsibility to, to give them the best advantage they can so they can be good citizens and good people when they grow up. You know, I always like to look at your website. You got a beautiful family picture on it. And by yes. the way, the website is votebrettjones.com, right? Yes, votebrettjones.com. So, so I, there's your wife. You got three kids. I was going to ask yeah. you like about yeah. your family. But I'm just looking on your website. By the website. way, my wife is running for my old assembly district. So we're both running for office this time. So she also has a passion to help and, and improve conditions. And we really feel that we have to get in politics because our country's going in the wrong direction. With eight years of with the Barack Obama, we've got to turn this ship around if we're going to have the, not this globalist, socialist, Marxist nightmare. So that's why we're so passionate and we want to help improve Nevada and keep it from becoming California, Sanctuary California East, and as Nevada to hopefully help our country turn around yeah. for the better. The family, the element of the family is so important in America. You have to have that. Yes. And we'll talk a little bit at the end about what you just said because I'm getting concerned. Yes. And I've been in the military government back and forth and I'm deeply concerned about our country right now. So integrity. Integrity is where it all comes down to. If you don't have integrity, then you don't have anything really. And what my frustration is, particularly in politics, when we were in my session, all of the Republicans campaigned on the fact that they wanted lowest government, lower taxes, yeah. etc. And then yet so many of them violated their campaign pledges. I didn't. I got attacked vehemently. By the way, I also tried to, I brought a bill to kick Common Core out of our school system because if there's anything yeah. that is like to sabotage the education of our children, it's like it's a covert way to just make them fail. So I wanted to get Common Core, but unfortunately these liberal progressives, they, they want to dumb down society. So integrity is so important and that's the only negative I have about most of the guys in my race except for Roberson who has a record and he doesn't want to go against me to talk about issues because my issues yeah. will win. The other guys have never held office. They've never had to push the button. They've never had to experience when the governor is telling them to do one thing, when the lobbyists are telling them to do another thing, when, when other people, constituents are telling them. You got to be able to stand firm and like we saw, although all the Republicans campaigned on lower taxes, most of them went against it. So that's why it's so important that you actually know how somebody's pushed that button. And I have a very good record. My record with NPRI, the Nevada Policy Research Institute, the very top for right. pro-business. So going on with your family, three kids, how old are they? Well, I have a, a four-year-old daughter, a two-and-a-half-year-old, two-and-two-thirds-year-old boy, mm -hmm. and then I have a seven-month-old little, mm -hmm. uh, little guy right now. That's uh, Braxton. And I also have two older boys from my previous marriage, and one of them works full-time at my company, and another wow. one right now is at USC. How old are they? Uh, 30 and 20. Oh, good. Similar to me. Yeah, I've, yeah. Got a, I've got a... Family, it's got some spread in it too. It's fun that way. So having kids Keep the second young. time around, boy, they keep me on my feet. They're, they, they, uh, they, they're a handful, that's for sure. But, I, but I see I your wife minute. has a lot of work too there. Yeah. Well, my yeah. wife, yeah, my wife does a great job with the kids. So what does she do when she's not? Well, taking she care works of the kids? at Real Water also. Well, she works with family yes. business. I yes, love family it. business, love and we, we have a full time nanny, of course. But um, you know, our love kids it. are very involved yeah. with their life on all aspects. That's 
in America, having your own family business and getting everybody involved is a wonderful thing. Yes, yes, it is glorious. You know, I run across people that say, oh, I can't work with my wife or whatever. If you don't have the relationship with your family and kids, I, I feel sorry for you because, sure, we have rough times occasionally, but it's just so glorious to be building something yeah. together, to be creating something together and working unified in a, in a direction which is pro-survival for all of us. In a weird way, you work all the time, though, too. Your life is your business, but your family is interjected. Right. You get to do things. Exactly. Take time out. Travel, everything. Yeah. So now we get to talk about your campaign that we've talked okay. a little bit about. We've sort of broke the rules, but we're getting close to the election. So tell us about your campaign. We sort of know what you ran. It's about purpose and vision to help Nevada become a good state, a great state. Right. And to help small business. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So very regulation. You know, unfortunately, most of the people that get into the legislature never sign the front end of a check. And they do things, they enact these rules with good intentions, but they end up being so harmful to business in multiple ways. But one of the things that I just have a foundational principle. We became the greatest country on the planet in the history of our planet Earth in a, just a couple hundred short years. And it was based on personal responsibility, limited government, and hard work ethic. So if we can restore those three things and get rid of all this other junk, we will then continue to be a leader and a beacon for the world. I mean, we're a leader of the world, but we're, we're dropping so fast now with this socialist Marxist indoctrination, particularly in our public school system. It's got to be fixed. So my first thing is to keep limited government. Always fight to keep limited government. Because right. people, I mean, you and I can decide what to do with our lives a lot better than some bureaucrat, okay? Right. Second thing is taxes low and regulation low for business. Third is we've got to fund these ESAs. All that money we spent, 1.6 billion extra dollars in the la that big tax increase. You know where we came in just recently? 49. Right. It's not helping. You can't keep throwing money at this broken system. Yeah. That's why the educational savings account to let private industry compete and set a standard for the public education. That's why we need it so desperately. Third is election integrity. Without election integrity, we're lost, and that's what I'm concerned. And I really want our Secretary of State to really continue to work hard to make sure we have election election integrity and then right now that's all over in the news is uh second amendment yeah you know the right the, the left is out blatantly saying we want to take away your second amendment rights and your first amendment rights so we right. got to hold our first and second amendment in place and i like to point out that another thing mike roberson did is he killed campus carry when he had the chance we had a bill and he personally killed campus carry which megan's law up here in reno that was so famous called megan's law because she got she had a a CCMP, um, right, right. But she wasn't allowed to have her gun, and she got yeah. raped just a hundred yards away from the. Uh, I'm very, very familiar with the case right here. Terrible, yeah, terrible, yeah, terrible. Honest people owning yeah. guns is the is what the Second Amendment's about. Right, and you know, I th I think you answered the question uh, at the debate about the, the Second Amendment too, and the idea of concealed carry even in the schools, things like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know what happened was we had Parkland where 17 got killed. About right. two weeks later, nobody's talking about another gunman came in, but an, uh, an officer or was there and took him out before right. he got any. Right. Killed a bunch of people. So, that's good. So in the campaign, two more questions. Sure. What are the biggest challenges you have so far? Well, the biggest challenges are getting the word out because obviously at the state level, you have to travel. We're a big, diverse state, right. and we have all the way from Elko up here. I mean, Reno's, it's easier big to get I've gone 95 many times in my life. Yeah, so there's all these little communities. So that's the biggest challenge, I think. And getting the word out because there's a certain people that are in the know. They know who I am because I was in the legislature. I do talk yeah. radio a lot and stuff like that. And they know who Roberson is. But the next level layer of people don't really know. They don't pay attention. And that's who we have to reach. And it's a challenge to reach them. Very good. Very good. And then finally, what can the listener do to help you in your campaign? Well, obviously, you can volunteer. Second, uh, donate. Money goes a long way. Um, and spread the word. If you like what I'm saying, if you like a conservative that's willing to stand up to the establishment, who has a proven track record, who knows what it is to build a business, then I'm your guy. Very good. So the last question is really a tough one. And it's a tough one because there's only one restaurant you can talk about. When I'm in Las Vegas, where do I need to go eat? Okay, I was going to Okay, I was going to tell you to go to El Dorado, the uh, gourmet or the organic Mexican restaurant, but I have a better one. If you've ever been to Nordstrom's Cafe, go to Nordstrom's Cafe. It's at the top of the Nordstroms. Really? And they have, and most people don't know this. They on the have strip, a, the, the yeah, ball on right the strip. Yeah, right in the fashion yeah, mall. Yeah, yeah. The third floor, they have Nordstrom's Cafe, and it's the best cafe you'll ever be to be, go to. It's got really good food, and it's not that expensive. That is really crazy. Yeah, that came Nordstrom's, Nordstrom's Cafe. Yeah, Very good. I go there all the time. If you park underneath the parking yeah, structure, yeah, you get in the yeah. elevator, just go straight when up, and you're right I, there. I used to go to Las Vegas from time to time often, and I've been in there. Yeah. The Nordstrom's cool. Cafe. It's cool. That's different. Yes. So, say, hey, thanks. So, I appreciate you coming in. What's next? Uh, what's next is we're going to the Women's Forum here, which is just right down the hall. And I want to thank you, Bill, as well. And also I want to thank the Men's Club, the Reno Men's Club, because right. I appreciate all you're doing, getting right. the word out and letting well, us have a, a stage. Go and make it. Hustle. Okay. Thank you. Take care.
Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead and if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail, go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV. You can go over here, watch a couple more videos, link to our website at republicanmenstclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.